great news in the AI world. DeepSeek just dropped its R1 model. And guess what? It's giving OpenAI's O1 a run for its money, and it's open source. Today, we're diving into the paper behind it, exploring how reinforcement learning and some clever tricks made R1 a reasoning powerhouse. This is one you definitely don't want to miss. All right, let's dive in. This paper introduces two fascinating models, DeepSeek R10 and DeepSeek R1. Both are designed to boost reasoning capabilities in large language models using reinforcement learning. DeepSeek R10 is the first of its kind, trained entirely with reinforcement learning, skipping supervised fine-tuning altogether. It's impressive how it develops reasoning skills naturally, but it does have some quirks, like struggling with readability and consistent language handling. To tackle these issues, DeepSeek R1 builds on its predecessor by using a multi-stage training approach. It starts with cold start data, giving the model a solid foundation before applying reinforcement learning. This tweak not only fixes DeepSeek R10's problems, but also helps it match the reasoning performance of advanced models like OpenAI's ON11217. What's really cool is that the team released open source versions of both models, including smaller distilled variants ranging from 1.5 billion to 70 billion parameters. These are based on architectures like QN and Llama, making them accessible for further research and experimentation. Now take a look at figure one. It shows benchmark results comparing DeepSeek R1 against other top models. DeepSeek R1 leads or ties with models like OpenAI 01 December 17th across tasks like math problem solving, math 500, multi-choice reasoning, MMLU, and domain-specific benchmarks. For example, it achieves over 97% accuracy in Math 500, significantly outperforming smaller models like OpenAI 1 Mini. This sets the stage for a deep dive into how reinforcement learning can supercharge reasoning in language models, backed by some compelling benchmarks and open source contributions. Let's move on to the paper's introduction. You might already know large language models have been advancing quickly. Post training has become a key step for fine tuning models' reasoning accuracy alignment with social norms, and adaptability to user needs, all at a lower computational cost compared to pre-training from scratch. Early on, OpenAI's on one series models pushed forward by extending chain-of-thought reasoning steps, which helped them tackle math, coding, and scientific questions better. Still, there's a lingering issue. How well do these models scale at test time, especially for generalizing complex reasoning? Plenty of methods like reward-based tuning, reinforcement learning, or search algorithms have tried to address these gaps. But so far, matching OpenAI's top reasoning benchmarks has been tricky. That's where this paper sets its sights. Through reinforcement learning, the authors trained a base model called DeepSeq-V3Base to create DeepSeq R10. They saw a big jump on benchmarks like AIME 2024, from 15.6% pass at 1 up to 71%, and when majority voting was used, it hit 86.7%, roughly on par with OpenAI's 010912. Yet, DeepSeek R10 had a problem with readability and stable language use. So, they rolled out DeepSeek R1, which mixes cold start data, multi-stage training, and some fine-tuning. After all these steps, DeepSeek R1 kept up with OpenAI's 011217. They also distilled DeepSeq R1 into smaller models. By using QN 2.5 to 32B and others, these smaller versions retained much of the original reasoning strength. Even a 14B model surpassed bigger open source models like QN 32B on some tasks. All in all, these efforts show a way to get strong reasoning results in dense models. Here, the paper highlights its main contributions and gives a summary of how these models performed. One major contribution was applying reinforcement learning directly to a base model, no supervised fine-tuning at the start. This let the model explore chain-of-thought reasoning and eventually become DeepSeek R10. It performed well on tasks requiring things like self-verification and longer reasoning sequences. In doing so, it showed that reinforcement learning can encourage reasoning even without initial fine-tuning. The DeepSeq R1 pipeline builds on that. There are two RL stages for refining reasoning and alignment with human preferences, plus two supervised stages that seed the model for both reasoning and non-reasoning tasks. 
This structured training method might pave the way for broader improvements in how reasoning models are built. They also explored distilling larger models into smaller ones while keeping reasoning strong. These smaller models, such as DeepSeq R1 Distill QN7B, do quite well on tests like AIME 2024, sometimes beating bigger models like QWQ32B Preview and bigger versions like DeepSeq R1 Distill QN32B reach high marks on math and coding tasks, stacking up against OpenAI's OM1 Mini and surpassing earlier open source alternatives. Evaluation results show DeepSeq R1 hitting around 79.8% on AIME 2024 and 97.3% on Math-500. It's competitive with OpenAI models in coding tests, and it also handles educational benchmarks effectively. This suggests it's pretty robust across a range of domains. Ready to dig into the approach for improving reasoning in LLMs? Here, the authors highlight how they moved away from relying solely on large, supervised datasets and turned to reinforcement learning instead. They refer to it as cold start RL when they skip supervised fine-tuning altogether. Then they add a bit of supervised data later to push performance even further. First up is DeepSeq R10, which uses pure RL directly on a base model. By avoiding supervised training at the start, the model is encouraged to grow its reasoning abilities on its own. They want to show that RL alone can effectively tease out reasoning. They also describe their reinforcement learning algorithm, which uses group relative policy optimization, GRPO. Rather than adding a separate critic model, GRPO looks at groups of responses from an older version of the model, scores them, and then updates the new model's policy. That way, the better outputs get rewarded, and training remains stable. Conceptually, rewards are averaged and standardized across these groups, which helps keep costs manageable and still provides strong feedback signals. Check out any formulas mentioned here in the paper if you want to see the nitty-gritty. Overall, it's a cost-conscious way to guide a model into generating better reasoning over time. Next, let's talk about how rewards are set up for DeepSeq R10. The model gets rewards based on two main things. First, accuracy. If it's solving math, the solutions are checked against rules or correct answers. And if it's coding, automated tests do the validation. Second, format. The model is encouraged to present its reasoning separately from its final answer, so it's clear how it arrived at the conclusion. They also mention a training template that structures how the model thinks through a problem before spitting out the final answer. It's a simple structure but helps capture the model's natural progression during RL. Take a look at the results on the AIME 2024 benchmark. The model starts off with low accuracy, then picks up the pace as RL continues, matching some of OpenAI's models. There's even a table that compares DeepSeq R10 to various methods. The numbers suggest that, over time, RL can really hone the model's reasoning. The takeaway is that reinforcement learning keeps pushing the model to improve, showing how it can adopt better reasoning strategies with each training round. Here you'll see a comparison between DeepSeq R10 and OpenAI's models on multiple benchmarks. Check out the table showing how DeepSeq R10 measures up on tasks like AIME 2024 and MA Thash 500. You'll see that it's quite competitive. For example, DeepSeq R10 might get a 71% pass rate on AIME 2024, which is close to OpenAI 0912 and ahead of OpenAI Mini. Look at the figure tracking its performance over the course of training. Early on, it's not so accurate, but then there's a sharp climb as it learns. The biggest insight is that the model doesn't need any supervised data to get there. It's strictly reinforcement learning. And when they apply majority voting, accuracy jumps beyond 86% on AIME. All this underlines how the model can essentially teach itself with a feedback loop, starting from scratch and moving to a high level of reasonings. It's a good demonstration that, if the incentives are set up right, models can self-improve quite a bit. Now take a look at the graph here showing the average response length over time for DeepSeq R10. Notice how the responses get longer as training progresses. Why is that interesting? Because it suggests the model is naturally learning to think more deeply, taking more steps, revisiting earlier logic, and generally increasing the detail in its chain of thought. This emerges spontaneously, without explicit prompts, telling it to be more verbose. Another cool point. Once it has extended computation at test time, 
the model refines its process even more. It sometimes rechecks or reevaluates previous steps in the chain, boosting both efficiency and accuracy. This leads to what the authors call an aha moment, when the model decides to allocate more time to rethink or correct itself. It's an example of how the right incentives can push a system to develop complex problem-solving strategies on its own. If you look at table three here, you'll see a neat example of one of those aha moments. The model changes its course mid-solution, showing how it rethinks and refines its answer. It's reminiscent of a human catching a mistake and backtracking to correct it. This is a direct result of reinforcement learning, where the model is trained to keep improving without explicit step-by-step -step instructions. However, DeepSeq R10 isn't perfect. It tends to mix languages and produce hard-to-read text. That's why the authors created DeepSeq R1. They used a cold start approach with high quality data to give the model better language stability right from the beginning. This includes strong chain of thought examples, few shot prompts, and curated answers. In short, the cold start approach helps the model avoid those awkward phases where it can be unstable or inefficient in RL training. DeepSeq R1, as a result, aims for both solid reasoning and better readability. Here, we learn more about how DeepSeq R1 tackles the readability issue head-on. They introduced a structured output pattern that helps the model produce clearer, more user-friendly reasoning. Instead of letting the model ramble, there's a set format that organizes thoughts and final answers. Next, there's a reinforcement learning phase specifically targeted at reasoning tasks like coding and math. A persistent challenge was language mixing, where parts of the answer might drift between languages. So, a language consistency reward was introduced. It slightly reduced raw accuracy, but it improved the user experience by generating more coherent text. Finally, they used rejection sampling and supervised fine-tuning to polish the model even further. By collecting outputs, filtering out problematic ones, and ensuring diverse tasks in the training set, like writing and role-playing, they ended up with 600,000 carefully selected samples. This final step tightens up both reasoning skills and readability, preparing the model for broader use. Here, we see how non-reasoning data helps balance DeepSeq R1. They included things like writing, factual Q&A, and translation, all of which were less about multi-step reasonings. Using their DeepSeq V3 pipeline, they generated about 200,000 samples for these simpler tasks. Added to the earlier reasoning data, they had a total of 800,000 samples to fine-tune the base model twice. They also walk through a reinforcement learning phase that broadens the scope even more. The reward system is partially rule-based for reasoning tasks, emphasizing correctness and logic. But for general tasks, they rely on preference-based models that check for helpfulness and safety. This makes the model more aligned with user needs, rather than focusing on raw correctness alone. Finally, there's distillation, a way to shrink large models down into smaller ones without losing too much of the reasoning power. By fine-tuning open-source bases like QN or Llama on the curated data, they show that smaller variants can do well on benchmarks without doing fresh reinforcement learning. It's purely supervised fine-tuning, proving that distillation is a solid technique for efficiency. Now let's talk about how DeepSeq R1 is evaluated. They use a range of benchmarks, from multiple choice tests like MMLU and MMLU Pro to knowledge checks like Simple QA. For coding, they've got Live Code Bench, and for math, there's the famous AIME 2024. They also mention open-ended evaluations like Alpaca Eval, where other LLMs judge the answers pairwise. You'll see that prompts mostly follow specific guidelines, with small tweaks allowed for zero-shot conditions. They compare DeepSeq R1 to baselines like DeepSeq-V3 and various OpenAI models such as O1 Mini and O11217. Sometimes they rely on official reports for performance comparisons if they can't access certain APIs directly. For the generation setup, they cap outputs at 32,768 tokens. They adjust temperature and sampling parameters to get consistent performance measures. Then they show how DeepSeq R1 does on benchmarks like MMLU, frames, and so on. It tends to do well on STEM-heavy tasks and long context queries, indicating it handles logical complexity effectively.
Check out Table 4 here to see a comprehensive comparison of DeepSeq R1 and other top models. You'll notice that DeepSeq R1 generally holds its own in English reasoning tasks such as MMLU and IFEVAL. On fact-based tasks like Simple QA, it surpasses DeepSeq V3. Sometimes OpenAI models still have an edge in Chinese-specific tasks like C Simple QA, though. In math and coding benchmarks like CodeForces and LiveCodeBench, DeepSeq R1 often beats or stays close to models like OpenAI-1 Mini. It also does well on AIME and Math 500, showing high scores in reasoning. As for open-ended evaluations like Alpaca Eval, it tends to provide concise, accurate responses without overexpanding. Overall, it demonstrates versatility in different types of tasks, whether they're fact-based or reasoning-intensive. Now, let's shift focus to the distilled versions of DeepSeq R1. In Table 5, you'll see smaller models like DeepSeq R1 Distill Q14B and DeepSeq R1 Distill Llama 70B. Despite being smaller, they outperform certain bigger, non-distilled models on a variety of benchmarks, including math and coding. Then, the authors ask a question. What if we just trained smaller models with RL from scratch instead of distilling a large model's knowledge? To answer this, they did a big RL experiment on QN32 B-Base for math and STEM tasks. Table 6 shows that RL definitely boosts performance, coming close to the distilled models in many respects. But there are still trade-offs regarding efficiency and fine-tuning complexities. The main takeaway is that both distillation and RL can be effective ways to enhance reasoning. Distillation is quick if you already have a strong model while RL can tune a model more directly. Combining them might offer an even better route for getting strong, efficient reasoning models. At this point, the paper covers some experiments that didn't quite work out. One was the Process Reward Model, or PRM, designed to validate reasoning tasks step by step. It, it looked promising for ranking or guided search, but had problems scaling to general reasoning steps. It also had issues like reward hacking, plus heavy compute costs, making it tough to implement widely. Another idea was Monte Carlo Tree Search, or MCTS, which we know works well for board games like Go. The authors tried to apply MCTS to break down reasoning tasks, but language generation has a huge search space and flexible rules, so MCTS had trouble converging on stable solutions. Sometimes it got stuck in repetitive loops, and training a value model for every token was also very challenging. So these two methods highlight how tricky it can be to adapt certain techniques to language-based reasoning, especially at scale. They serve as lessons on what to watch out for when designing RL systems for complex text tasks. Finally, the paper concludes by summarizing what's been achieved and where things can go next. DeepSeq R1 showed that reinforcement learning can produce strong reasoning results, rivaling some of OpenAI's newer models without needing much supervised fine-tuning. By using a cold start strategy and iterative learning, the model reached a high standard of performance. They also demonstrated that you can distill big models into smaller ones without sacrificing too much reasoning capability. Models like DeepSeq R1 Distill QN performed well on math benchmarks and even outmatched some instruction-tuned models. Looking ahead, the authors plan to improve multi-turn interactions, function calling, and better handling of mixed language queries. They also want to refine prompts so the model isn't overly sensitive to slight changes, and they see an opportunity to expand reinforcement learning beyond these tasks especially in software engineering applications. Overall, it's a step toward models that not only reason well, but also adapt to real-world settings more smoothly. And there you have it, a deep dive into how reinforcement learning is pushing the boundaries of reasoning in AI. From cold starts to distillation, and from math benchmarks to coding challenges, DeepSeq-R1 is paving the way for smarter, more adaptable models. Thanks for joining me today. See you tomorrow.